This is Dimitri Lascaris reporting for the Real News Network from Montreal, Canada. On March 30th, the day that is known to Palestinians as Land Day, thousands of protesters in the blockaded and heavily populated enclave of Gaza began a series of peaceful protests known as the Great March of the Return. These protests are intended to culminate on May 15th, which is known to Palestinians as the Nakba Day or the Day of Catastrophe. Nakba Day is a commemoration of the expulsion from Palestine in 1948 of an estimated 700,000 Palestinians and the destruction and depopulation by Zionist forces of hundreds of Palestinian towns and villages. During this year's Great March of the Return, Israeli snipers have killed dozens of Palestinian protesters and wounded hundreds of others. As the Nakba Day approaches, there seems to be no relaxation by the Israeli military in its brutal response to these protests. Now here to discuss with us what is happening on the ground are two representatives of al Haq, a human rights organization founded in 1979 and based in the occupied Palestinian territories. Rania Muharab is a legal researcher with the Palestinian human rights organization al Haq. She holds an LLM in international human rights and humanitarian law. She joins us today from Ramallah in the occupied West Bank. Tarek Zakut has worked with al Haq as a field researcher in the Gaza Strip since 2008. Over the past 10 years, Tadek has monitored and documented human rights violations perpetrated by both Israel and the Palestinian Authority, and he has covered and documented three Israeli offensives against Gaza. He joins us today from Gaza itself. Thank you very much for coming on The Real News, Rania and Tadek. Thank you very much, Dimitri. Thank you, so Tadek. Thank you, Tadek. Tadek, let's first talk about the casualty figures up to the current time and since the beginning of the protests on May, March 30th. How many Palestinian civilians, according to your uh, work, have been killed and how many have been wounded by uh, the Israeli military in these protests? منذ 33 عدد القتلى بلغ حتى اللحظة 37 قتيل منهم أربع أطفال واثنين صحفيين آخرهم كان صحفي استشهد قبل ساعات من الآن عدد المصابين وصل 2500 مصاب منهم حوالي 500 طفل و100 سيدة بالإضافة لعشرات المصابين من الطواقم الطبية and how many uh, journalists have been killed and wounded by the Israeli military in these protests? And how many casualties, Tadek, have been reported on the side of the Israeli military? لا يوجد أي مصاب من جنود الاحتلال والمتابع للصحافة الإسرائيلية لا يوجد أي تسجيل للاحتلال على الإطلاق. Now, Tadek, uh, Doctors Without Borders just released a statement uh, within the last few days in which it revealed that its doctors have been, quote, receiving patients with unusually severe injuries, many of which are extremely complex to treat. Such serious injuries will leave many of these patients with long-term physical disabilities, close quote. Tadek, have you uh, observed uh, or come across evidence that Israeli forces are using ammunition that may be specially designed to inflict uh, particularly severe and debilitating injuries on those who are wounded? لا أكيد إحنا ما قدرناش نحصل على أي أعير نارية من هذا النوع وهذا يحتاج أيضا إلى خبراء في هذا المجال إحنا استطعنا من خلال عملنا على توثيق هذه الحالات أن يعني نوثق طبيعة الحالة وما تسببه تسببته هذه الأعير النارية من إصابات بالغة يعني من خلال توثيقنا مع الأطباء وجمع العشرات من الإفادات يعني كان تسببت الأعير النارية بتهتكات في العظام والأوعية الدموية عندنا الآن في لو تقريبا 28 حالة تم بتر أطرافهم حتى هذه اللحظة من بينهم تقريبا أربع أطفال طبيعة هذه الأعيرة لا تعرف صراحة ماهيتها ولكنها تسبب إصابات خطيرة وبالغة في الخطورة وهذا 
ما لمسناه من خلال توثيقنا للعديد من الحالات. رانيا، you know, as we said at the outset, or I said at the outset, the Great March of Return is intimately related to the aspiration of Palestinian refugees to return to their homeland. Please talk to us about the right of Palestinian refugees to return to their homeland in what is now Israel. What does international law have to say about this subject? Absolutely. Um, the right of Palestinian refugees uh, to return home is well enshrined in international law. And it was even enshrined in customary international law before their displacement in 48. So even in 1948, international law already prohibited the mass expulsion of civilian populations and uh, required uh, Israel to ensure the return of Palestinian refugees following the creation of the state. Uh, of course, as you know, on the 11th of December, 1948, the UN General Assembly Resolution uh, 194 recognized the right of return of Palestinian refugees. And uh, this resolution 70 years later has been reaffirmed more than 100 times since and uh, more than any other resolution in UN history. So this is just to say that this is a very well enshrined principle in international law and uh, Palestinian refugees for 70 years have been denied uh, the realization of this right. Now, Tarek, it, it's claimed by the Israeli military that the protests have been organized by Hamas and that uh, many of those shot were supporters or members of Hamas and that some or many of the protesters have been throwing rocks at soldiers at the, uh, at the fence. Uh, have you seen evidence that these protests have been organized Hamas, by Hamas? Have you seen uh, any of the protesters engage in any acts of violence, such as rock throwing? How in general do you respond to the claims being made by the Israeli military about the organizers of these protests and uh, their relationship to Hamas? Okay. أنا خليني يعني أحكي عن طبيعة هذه المظاهرات السلمية منذ 30 مارس 2018 وهذا اليوم هو مناسبة وطنية يحييها الفلسطينيين في ذكرى يوم الأرض بدأت فعاليات المسيرة السلمية تواجد عشرات الآلاف من المواطنين الفلسطينيين بمختلف فئاتهم العمرية وسواء أطفال نساء بالإضافة لعائلات بأكملها تواجدوا داخل الأراضي الفلسطينية في مناطق مكشوفة تماما وهي قريبة من الشريط الحدودي هذه المسيرات طبعا خرجت بشكل عفوي وبهبة شعبية دعني أتحدث أنها كانت نتاج عدة عوامل ومنها الحصار الخانق على قطاع غزة والأزمات المتلاحقة بسبب هذا الحصار المفروض منذ 11 عاما بالإضافة إلى أن هذه المسيرة أو القائمون على هذه المسيرة هم يعني عنوانوا هذه المسيرة أو شكلوا هيئة وطنية عليا لمسيرة العودة وكسر الحصار كان عنوانها واضح في ذكرى يوم الأرض وتستمر هذه المسيرة حتى 15 مايو حسب ما أعلن عنه أعلنت عنه الهيئة وأيضا المتظاهرين حتى 15 مايو من 2018 وهذه مناسبة أخرى وهي ذكرى السبعين للنكبة الفلسطينية المتظاهرون على كل حال هم ذهبوا إلى المناطق الحدودية للتعبير عن مطلبهم وإرادتهم وحقهم في العودة وفق قرار 194 قرار الأمم المتحدة 194 هم يرون بأن هذا حق أصيل لهم لم ينفذ حتى اللحظة وبالتالي كانت المظاهرات السلمية بشكل عام لم نلاحظ خلال تواجدنا المستمر كباحثين حق خلال هذه المظاهرات لم نلاحظ أي مظاهر مسلحة أو مسلحين متواجدين ضمن هذه المسيرة على لم يشكل أيضا هؤلاء المتظاهرون أي خطر حقيقي على 
جنود الاحتلال كانوا يتظاهرون بشكل سلمي بعضهم يرفع علام فلسطين والبعض الآخر يردد هدافات وطنية وآخرون كانوا يشعلون إطارات سيارات في أماكن قريبة من الشريط الحدودي وهناك كان العشرات يحاولون الاقتراب من السلك الشائك لوضع علام فلسطين هناك أو لقطع أجزاء بسيطة من هذا من هذا السلك وبالمناسبة يوجد عندما نتحدث عن السلك الشائك يوجد سياج حدودي رئيسي على بعد تقريبا 30 متر من هذا من هذا السلك الشائك وجنود الاحتلال يتمركزون خلف تلال وسوات الرملية على بعد 50 متر على الأقل داخل السياج الحدودي الرئيسي فهناك مسافة كبيرة بين المتظاهرين وبين جنود الاحتلال Now, Rania, let's suppose just for the purposes of argument that one or more of these protesters who have approached this fence uh, are in fact uh, supporters or even members of Hamas, but that they are unarmed, uh, so that they're, no, they're in no position to actually uh, inflict injury upon the soldiers on the other side of the fence. What does international law have to say about how the occupying army can conduct itself in these circumstances? Does the mere fact that an unarmed protester is a member of Hamas confer a right on the occupying army to shoot the protester? Uh, as you know, these are peaceful protests, as uh, my colleague has just confirmed. They're peaceful protests of civilians, and even if uh, there are members of Hamas within the protest, uh, the fact of them being unarmed offers them protection under, under international law. And uh, Israel as occupying power in the policing of a peaceful assembly such as the Great March of Return um, must be guided by the principles of necessity and proportionality in the use of lethal force. Uh, this means that it, uh, the occupying forces may only use lethal uh, force when absolutely necessary in order to protect life. And this is clearly not the situation that we're talking about here. Um, the evidence of this is that uh, the International Criminal Court even came out and said um, Israel may be committing war crimes in uh, targeting peaceful civilian protesters in the Gaza Strip. And this is exactly what we're documenting as well as al Um We're documenting excessive use of force, but not only excessive, also premeditated and intentional use of force. This means uh, that there is an actual order given to Israeli soldiers to use the force that they, we have documented. And we see this in the casualties and the, the types and nature of injuries that my colleagues are discussing and are documenting on the ground. Uh, if I can quote one Israeli official on the types of orders given to the Israeli occupying forces and the soldiers that are positioned, at the fence. Um, you may know that a few days ago, on the 21st of April, um, an Israeli brigadier general and former head of the Southern Command of the Israeli Occupation Forces uh, discussed in a radio interview how such commands are given. And I quote, he says, um, I know how these orders are given. I know how a sniper does the shooting. I know how many authorizations he needs before he receives an authorization to open fire. It is not the whim of one or the other sniper who identifies the small body of a child now and decides he'll shoot. Someone marks the target for him very well and tells him exactly why one has to shoot and what the threat is from that individual. And to my great sorrow, sometimes when you shoot at a small body and you intend to hit his arm or shoulder, it goes even higher." End of quotation. So this is just to show that we are dealing with premeditated, intentional use of force and a shoot-to-kill policy that we at al haq have been documenting for decades, um, which means that Israel's, uh, Israel's um, response to the Great March of Return is none other than an intentional commission of willful killings and war crimes and has nothing to do with the nature of the assembly itself. Rania, do you have any reason to believe that the International Criminal Court might actually take action in this particular case? So al haq and partner organizations in Gaza, including the Palestinian uh, Center for Human Rights and uh, Al-Mizan, have made a submission to the International Criminal Court indicating the names of the victims and the killings that uh, have been perpetrated by the Israeli occupying forces since the 30th of March. We've not only indicated the names of those killed, we've also indicated an intention 
um, to use this, uh, to, an intention to kill and to shoot to kill Palestinian protesters, uh, which may constitute a, a war crime of willful killing. We've also discussed the injuries that uh, we are documenting, which uh, may amount to the war crime of willfully causing great injury and suffering um, to uh, civilians. So uh, this submission has been made to the International Criminal Court on behalf of Palestinian human rights organizations. And uh, we have urged in the submission, we urge the prosecutor to immediately request the opening of an investigation into the situation in Palestine. As you know, the ICC is currently conducting a preliminary examination into alleged war crimes and crimes against humanity being committed. Um, and we hope that considering the ongoing nature of these crimes, the ICC will take action. Um, but we also urge, of course, third states to impose sanctions on Israel for its continued uh, commission of crimes and grave breaches of the Geneva Conventions. Well, The Real News has been speaking today to two uh, researchers uh, of the human rights organization Al Haq, which is based in the occupied Palestinian territories, Rania Muharab and Tarek Zakut. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. And this is Dimitri Lascaris reporting for The Real News from Montreal, Canada. Mm -hmm.